At this time, I'm proud to present Jacques Pepin as our 2015 Metropolitan College commencement speaker. Celebrated chef, host of 12 popular cooking series, Jacques is also a gifted artist and author of more than two dozen cookbooks and a delightfully mischievous memoir. Jacques' energy and creativity are, are unstoppable. A new cooking series is scheduled to air on PBS this fall, along with the companion cookbook, both in time for his 80th birthday. Born in Bourg-en-Bresse, France, near Lyon, he began his formal training at 13 with apprenticeships in Paris, first at the distinguished Grand Hotel de l'Europe, and then under Lucien Dia at the Hotel Plaza Athenée. He served as personal chef to three French heads of state, including Charles de Gaulle. Established in France, Jacques felt the attraction of the new world. He moved to the United States in 1959 and worked at Le Pavillon, a historic French restaurant in New York City. Later, he became director of research and new development for Howard Johnson's, in charge with developing a line of food for the restaurant chain. While working, and this will sound familiar, he earned his bachelor's degree and then a master's in 18th century French literature at Columbia University. Both his home country and his adopted country have celebrated Jacques' achievements. Honors conferred by the government of France include Chevalier de l'Ordre des Arts et des Lettres, Chevalier de l'Ordre du Mérite Agricole, and in 2004, the National Order of the Legion of Honor. In the US, Jacques taught in the PBS series with culinary icon Julia Child, called Julia and Jacques Cooking at Home. This 22 episode series won an Emmy Award and the James Beard Foundation Award. At Boston University, Chef Pepin co founded with Julia Child the Metropolitan College Masters in Gastronomy and the Certificate in Culinary Arts. These programs established a tradition of integrating hands-on culinary experience with the academic study of cuisine in society. We are privileged having Jacques on the faculty since 1983 in recognition for the hundred grateful students he has taught, Metropolitan College honored him with the Roger DeVille Part-Time Faculty Award for Excellence in Teaching, and Boston University conferred upon him an honorary degree in human letters. The Gallic spirit is known for its elegance and smiling creativity. Less frequently mentioned is the tradition of hard work and extreme discipline. Dr. Pepin exemplifies these deeply French qualities, but he also embraced the American love of experimentation of readiness to integrate disparate culture. The result is a century-old culinary knowledge made young and deliciously worldly. 
Jacques, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. And thank you, Dean Tania Slaveta, for inviting me, and Catherine Moran and Ruth Fiolfi for coordinating my visit. I especially want to thank Rebecca Alcid, my dear friend and founding director of the Food and Wine and Master of Liberal Art Gastronomy Program, for all your years of support and love. Even though I've been teaching at BU for more than 30 years, you can hear from my accent that I'm not from Boston. I'm actually from Connecticut. You know, it's not too far. So when I started teaching at BU in 1983, I would never have thought that someday I would be here giving the comments address. This is a great honor. And today, as your speaker, I'm here to inspire you. I'm not sure that I can do that, but I will try. Born in France into a family of restaurateurs, I left school at age 13 to enter a cooking apprenticeship and eventually work in some of the most prestigious restaurants in Paris. And at some point, was even chef, personal chef to the French president, Charles de Gaulle. So I had a flourishing career in France. My dream was to come to America. America was, and still is, the El Dorado, the Golden Fleece. And all young people dreamed to come to America. I thought I would come here for a couple of years and learn the language and return to France. Well, this was more than half a century ago, and I'm still here. I came on a student boat at the end of 1959 and started working at Le Pavillon for the renowned French restaurant in Manhattan. However, with only a primary school education, I had somewhat of a complex about not having an education. So, a few weeks after I arrived, I enrolled at Columbia University in September 1959 in a class of English for foreign students. From 1959 to 1972, I would study at Columbia at night and work during the day. After completing my English language classes, I was accepted into an high school validation program and eventually I earned my BA and MA and almost finished my PhD thesis. I was paying for my study and still working as a chef. Going to college changed everything. It was the greatest time of my life. I'm still amazed at my luck. I was in America and everything was possible. At any age, you could change your life, better yourself without being ridiculed, laughed at, or looked down upon. At this time, the work of a chef was considered lowly and uninspired. And any good mother would have wanted her daughter or son to be a doctor, an architect, but certainly not a cook. Now we are geniuses. <laughs> well, getting that education prevented me from having a complex about not having an education. I was now a proud college graduate, as you are. And the work that I continued doing in my professional life, I did it by choice and with love. The School of Hospitality Administration at BU, at that time part of the Metropolitan College, opened in the early 1980s. At about that time, I taught a summer class at Wesleyan University in Middletown, Connecticut, on the history of French cuisine within the context of civilization and culture, a subject which was to have been part of my doctoral dissertation at Columbia. Henry Barbour, who taught at the New School of Hospitality Administration, invited me to teach at BU in the early 80s. For many years, I would taught classes for the School of Hospitality Administration and for the gastronomy program at MET, and I still teach for the culinary art program 
as well as teaching large public classes for the Metropolitan College. In the late 80s, I spoke with Julia Child, whom I met in 1960, and who live in Cambridge here, and we decided to give classes together at the Metropolitan College. At the beginning of the 1990s, under the direction of Rebecca, we wrote to Dr. John Silbert, which was BU's president at the time, about the possibility of creating an undergraduate program in gastronomy and the culinary arts. Eventually, this idea developed into the Master of Liberal Arts with a concentration in gastronomy, still, to my knowledge, a unique program. Teaching these large classes with Julia was great fun, and after I spoke to people at KQED, which is the PBS station in San Francisco where I taped my series, uh, Rebecca organized a special two-hour show entitled Cooking in Concert that we shot at the Sci Auditorium in 1993. It was shown that same summer at a two-hour special on PBS, and it was very successful. This led to another cooking in concert a few years later. And these were really the catalyst to a series of 24 shows and companion cookbook, uh, both called Julia and Jack Cooking at Home, that I videotaped at Juliet House in Cambridge. The show still appear on PBS station throughout the country. Western University Metropolitan College reminds me a lot of the School of General Study at Columbia. But it's better, because Columbia still doesn't have a program in gastronomy. In your school, the program for graduate, undergraduate, and even the non-credit program are amazingly diversified, extremely eclectic and varied, from gastronomy to criminal justice, from computer science to pre-medical study. It is a vibrant, exciting place to be. And the challenge that has changed your life forever. Be proud of your school. You are fortunate to have been part of it for several years of your life in this beautiful city of Boston. Today is your day. Today you have your degree and it is the beginning of your career. The beginning of a new life. It is a time of hope a time to believe in yourself, a time to dare. Be curious, be enthusiastic, be tenacious, and be engaged. It is a time in your life where the world impossible does not exist, a time to reach for the sky. Remember that you are the one who creates opportunity for yourself in life. You are responsible for your happiness, for your future. Have the courage to try. Fortune smiles on the audacious. You have a long road in front of you, but it is a good, a happy road. On this special day, this world is your world, and the future is your future to shape. The degree that you are getting today is with you for the rest of your life. It is a testament to your accomplishment. It is much more than a certificate, and it will remain in your mind and in your heart forever. The knowledge that you have acquired here is a knowledge that you will pass on to your children and your grandchildren, because the education that you have completed here is unique. However, with that recognition comes also responsibility. Responsibility to become engaged in society, to change things for the better, and to leave a positive mark. Take time to reflect on your life of the last few years. Take time to enjoy life now. Life itself is the reward, the benchmark, the recompense. Sometimes we are so intent in looking forward that we forget the present moment. Don't make that mistake. Look forward, but enjoy the here and now. Then, in time of hardship, when life becomes difficult, as it usually does at some point, think of this moment. No one can take this moment away from you. 
This is yours and yours alone. An accomplishment to be proud of. An achievement that will comfort you in darker days. Remember that success in life is very simple and very complex. Success in life is to be happy with yourself, with whom you are, with what you do. If you love what you do, you never have to go to work. Money for the sake of money doesn't make a person happy, although it may contribute it to a fair extent. Don't forget the simple pleasure of life. For me, it is still sharing a meal and a bottle of wine with friends. The enjoyment of being together with family and friends. To share. This is true happiness. As a graduate of the Metropolitan College, you are important. Your education enables you to influence, to affect, and to touch the people around you, from your family, your friend, and beyond. I believe in the goodness of human nature. With some people, and at some point, it doesn't seem to be apparent. But the goodness is there. With some digging, it appears. And it is well worth the effort to reveal it. Don't forget that now. With your education, you can analyze, you can try to understand, you can be open, tolerant, dare to dream, dare to make mistakes and live your life to the fullest. This is what a liberal education does for you. An education is very important. To quote Gilbert Chesterton, an English writer of the last century, Without an education, we are in the horrible and deadly danger of taking educated people seriously. <laughs> this should not happen to you. You should be able to reflect on your life and laugh at yourself occasionally. Don't take yourself too seriously. Finally, I want to thank you for the wonderful honor of addressing you today. I wish I could start my study right here all over again. Congratulations, and have a great life. Thank you.